here and they're wishing to withdraw consent to use the footage that you had, I guess, gotten. Fuck off. So can you please make sure that is done and make sure that any of the stuff that they have... Nope. We may or we may not use the footage. It is a public area, so we do have legal rights to use the footage. But you, like, interviewed them specifically, right? So, like... Yes, and they gave us consent to interview them. Well, now they're withdrawing it, so... That's not how it works, but... Which is interesting, given the event that you're at, right? Like, that's a little bit contradictory. I mean, it's a little bit contradictory. Well, if you're I totally say it, that's not how it works. <laughs> well, you can't just withdraw consent the next, like... Well, that's interesting. <laughs> why is that interesting? It's just like I don't know. No, 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 tell, tell me, tell me why. Like, like a rally for, like, like rapists, uh, like, you know, well, consent and, like, withdrawing consent, saying, like, no means no. They're saying no, and you're saying that, like... Okay, so if someone gives consent the night before, and then they have, no, 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 listen, if they have sex with a man and they give consent to him, then the next day decide, oh, I regret it. I'm going to report him for being a rapist, even though I gave him consent. You're saying that's okay? I am the one, the way your son don't need a gun to get respect up on the street. So you're, you're sounding a little bit like a 12-year-old because this is irrelevant. Nah, mate, the only one sounding like a 12-year-old pal is you. And to be honest, I think that number's way too fucking high. I would say more around the age of a... Eight year old, you fucking cry baby. I swear to god mate, at this point these people are just like fucking mentally ill. My lord and saviour here, Lauren. Clearly states the fucking facts to them and they're still not happy. But hey, then again, why would they be? They can't reason with logic mate. Anyway boys and girls, I thought in today's video we could have a little look at one of my heroes, my lord and saviour, Lauren Southern. And have a look at some of her best moments because to be honest i haven't really talking about her on my channel and all the videos she's in is just fucking hilarious mate hello my name is lauren a few years ago i uploaded this photo of myself holding a sign saying i don't need feminism because i believe in equality not entitlements and supremacy so without further ado pal let's have a look at some of lauren's best moments fuck up those feminists lauren fuck them up what happens when you say alleged rape and rape actually does happen what are we doing when we treat women like that? I don't understand. You, you know? can't put someone in prison if you haven't proven them guilty of something. So then how do we prove everyone guilty of stuff? You stupid fucking cunt. There are convictions, there are charges. When you say alleged rape, you're not believing the victim of said rape. You know, we put alleged as a word. So are you saying are you saying that we should victim. just believe women right away when they say they've been raped? We have to believe any rape victim. <laughs> you bitch. You did it. Stupid, stupid bitch doesn't even know. Nah, mate. Not sure if it quite works like that, pal. Because you see, the thing is, if it was generally like that, you'd probably have loads of people making a lot of shit up. People like you. You fucking plum. See, in my opinion, it's already bad enough. If a girl said you fucking raped her, mate, you're already fucked. And that's even if you didn't. Because when I talk to anybody about a story about a famous person allegedly raping someone and they're proven not guilty, everybody just says the same thing. Well, they just didn't get enough evidence to prove him guilty, which means people still believe that he actually did, even though he didn't. Let alone just believing what people say in the first place and just chucking anyone into jail, mate. I think anyone with more than one brain cell would realise that's not a fucking good idea, mate. No one believes people when they report the rapes because people like you. I, I believe that's people true. when there are evidence, and you know what? I'd love. If there's no evidence, then I really hope they get justice, but I don't believe in putting people in jail when there is no evidence for a crime. That is wrong, innocent until proven guilty. Do you believe in innocent until proven guilty? Gender sometimes in insults while gaming, but the amount of insults that flew back and forth, it didn't even matter. <laughs> Especially in games like Call of Duty, it just doesn't matter. And in a lot of cases, people will mistake me for a 10-year-old boy on things like Ventrilo and on Xbox live chat or whatever and that's I wouldn't even correct them a lot of the time because it doesn't matter it doesn't matter who I am to you over the mic it's just am I playing the game am I having fun am I with friends it it didn't matter if they thought I was a 10 year old boy on mic because it's not about my gender or my age it's not about that but so many people are trying to make it about that they're trying to make it about gender race age when People who actually do game know that that doesn't matter. It's in many games, that just doesn't matter. And 
I don't know that I think that's what kind of formed my views of people and seeing people more as individuals than as groups as um, in interest groups because that's my experience growing up was talking to people just as individuals and not thinking about what they looked like or not thinking about their gender or race or anything I don't know MMOs made me not a racist <laughs> Joining me to discuss this, we have from New York the author and political commentator Jeffrey Robinson, and from our central London studio, we've got Lauren Southern, a commentator at Rebel Media. That's a conservative online magazine. Good afternoon to you both. Jeffrey Robinson, let's start with you. Is it time to take another look at the Second Amendment? It's been time since the Second Amendment was passed. Of course, it's well overdue. I mean, how many more mass shootings do we need? How many more victims of gun violence do we need before the Republicans get off their ass, stop doing the work of the NRA, who is in the pocket of the gun manufacturers, and change the legislation to protect people? I mean, Paul Ryan, what a disgraceful jerk he's turning out to be. Last night, when he came onto the well of the, the House, he said that this, uh, this sit-in was a publicity stunt. I mean, the man is completely tone-deaf, typical of the Republicans. Lauren, what do you make of that? I mean, after all, the Second Amendment was uh, written in a very different environment in a very different era. You know, I'm not a fan of Paul Ryan, but I do agree with him on this one. It is a publicity stunt. It is purely virtue signaling. Oh, right. Even the Democrats themselves, like Chris Murphy, have admitted that none of these amendments would have stopped the shooting in Orlando or in San Bernardino. Not one of them, even the ones presented by the Republicans. They wouldn't have done a thing. They are just bureaucratic, more laws, and in fact, some of them are very biased. Even the ACLU have said that the ones that include banning people from the terrorist watch list and the no-fly list are discriminating against people who have been through no due process whatsoever. That is the ACLU, who are certainly not NRA supporters, who are certainly not massive gun fans. Yeah, Jeffrey, interesting point, that, because that's something a lot no. of people have said, is if you're on a no-fly list, you shouldn't be able to own a gun. Lawrence says otherwise. No, no. Ms. Southern uh, is completely wrong and tone deaf like Mr. Ryan. Let me tell you about Ms. Southern. Uh, I love it that she comes to my country and preaches no gun laws when Ms. Southern is a Canadian where they have very, very strict gun laws and where the gun laws work. We in the United States have 50,000 gun deaths a year. Ms. Southern in Canada has fewer than 310. So, Ms. Southern, here's my advice to you. Go back to Canada, get the gun laws changed there and obliterated, and then come back on Sky and let us know how well, well Lauren, that worked out get, for you. Let's, let's let Lauren Southern have a chance to respond to that. That's quite an accusation, Jeffrey. Sorry. Oh, I would, I would love for the gun laws to change in Canada. If I were an sure individual that were in America in a mass shooting, the first thing I would think is, I wish I had a gun on me. I wish I were able to defend myself. The gun is an equalizer. As an individual, no, if not. I were attacked... I would have many men who attacked me. I couldn't outpower. I would want a gun on me to defend myself from rape, from being murdered. If I was in a mass shooting, I would be a sitting duck. As much as you can love and trust the government, they still have to make that call. They still have a time to get there. And if there were someone with a gun in the Orlando shooting or the Paris shooting, any of these places, these mass deaths could have been stopped. Even the Eagles of Death, the, the concert that was playing in Paris, the singers said, that I wish there was someone in there with a gun so that this could have been stopped. I will try no, to change no. the laws in Canada, and I wish I were in the States right now, and maybe I'll go there someday so that I can have the right to defend myself from both people who want to attack me, do me harm, okay. and from a tyrannical government. Okay, it's a good point, but on the other hand... Uh, no, it's but... not a good point. It's nonsense. It's utter crap. It's not a good point at all. It's fallacious nonsense. We, it's rhetoric. It doesn't Jeffrey, make any I sense. I would apologize for your language. We are, of course, on live TV, so let's just remember yeah, I that know. when we're discussing I this. know, and it's still crap. Please explain to me. Please explain to me how one of these amendments would have stopped okay, the shooting I will explain of Orlando. To you. I, will gladly I will gladly explain what gun control does. No, no, no. It what eliminates, the amendments it eliminates, being... No, no, listen. Just listen, in your youthful high school exuberance, you are very naive. What gun violence you does, can call me names, what gun but... laws do, what gun laws do is prevent gun violence. See, one of the things really? that Miss Southern, it, 
Uh, it did really. There were guns in no, the in Orlando in the club. There were times there that were guns, but there were guns. Died. There were guns in the club in Orlando. The guards were armed. Obviously, you've never carried a gun. Some of us who served in the U.S. military carried have carried a gun. Okay, Jeffrey, and I can let's, tell you okay, something. Jeffrey, let's get back no, to let me finish. Let, let me finish. When you have Jeffrey, when you have lots and lots of it. guns in a room, when you have lots and lots of guns in a room, what you get is panic and more deaths. Miss Southern doesn't have a clue what she's talking about. Okay, Jeffrey, right. less of the personal attacks, please. Let's keep it on the subject. Lauren Southern. It is on the subject. She's yes. talking okay, nonsense. Okay, but less of the personal attacks, please. Lauren Southern, just to change tack slightly here. Now, what we saw in Orlando, it was, an, it was, frankly, the kind of assault weapon you don't need to defend yourself. There are over three million of those in ownership in the U.S. We don't need assault rifles like that, do you, to defend yourself? Surely the well, law should the be thing is, you do. The, the thing is, it's an equalizer, right? If the government has no, a weapon not. that they can use against the people, I mean, you can say, no, it's not, sir, but... <laughs> That's no, not an argument. You, you saw during the Chicago riots where you had Asian store owners defending their stores from being burnt down, and the only way they did that was with high caliber weapons, and they were one of the few peoples that didn't have their stores burned down. You saw it during, uh, in Ukraine when you had the government sniping their own people. The people who were disarmed, they were fighting with Molotovs against sniper rifles. You need to be able to defend yourself from a tyrannical government. And with most of America seemingly thinking that Trump is the new Adolf Hitler, I think that liberals would want to be arming themselves to defend themselves from oh, a nonsense. fourth right. Oh, oh, utter nonsense. Okay, Jeffrey, utter let's nonsense. Just, Jeffrey, the clock Seriously. is against us. Let let's me, just talk all right, now let me, about Let me the stick sitting. to the issue. Okay. Darshini, let me stick to the issue. For Please example, what Miss, what Miss Southern neglects is that the, um, the overwhelming single group that suffers most from gun violence in America are women, battered women, women who are subject to uh, domestic violence. Women suffering from domestic violence are eight times more likely to be murdered by their partner if there are guns in the house. Over the past 25 years, more intimate partner homicides with guns have taken place than all the other deaths of weapons combined. I okay, mean, Jeffrey, you know, it, it goes a lot so further Jeffrey, than the no-fly list. Are you Can suggesting just banning handguns? Okay, Jeffrey, I'm just suggesting inject taking handguns away from men who have domestic order uh, uh, restrictions against them, yes. Jeffrey, just to interject there, you make some really strong statistical points there, but on the other hand, eight years of an Obama administration, we haven't seen gun control being Well, of course not, up. because the Republicans the will loser? not bring it up. The Republicans refuse to bring it up because they're in the pocket of the NRA, and the NRA is in the pocket of the gun manufacturers. Can the you The Republicans me? instead have tried... 300 and some odd times to uh, obliterate Obamacare. They've never once uh, put uh, gun, gun legislation into the House. They won't. They're afraid. The NRA has them in their pockets. They're puppets and they're jerks. Can you jerks. explain to me why in Chicago during Father's Day weekend, 13 people were killed, 53 were injured by guns when they have some of the strongest gun laws in America? Can you explain that to me? They don't have strong gun laws in America because any idiot Chicago, can buy a gun. In Chicago. Any any idiot can buy a gun from a gun uh, show or on the internet, and there yes, are and no background checks. they can buy it illegally checks. as well when they're banned. But well, well, back, back here, not in, if back not if not if you have background checks, and not if you no, have. No, I'm uh, saying they can buy it illegally. No, no, they can no, no, buy no. it illegally. You know, this no is this is precisely this is precisely illegal. this is precisely why you and the Libertarian Party in Canada and the Libertarian Party in America have no credibility. You are completely disregarded as a These political force. These are personal force. attacks, that's, that's, that's sir. These personal, are personal yeah. attacks. Jeffrey, I think not that's arguments. a personal view. But let's just move back to the subject because the clock is against us. Now we've all seen those pictures of Democratic politicians staging that sit-in. It is an election year. Are we going to see this being a focal point in this campaign in the year ahead, do you think? Lauren. Sorry, I didn't hear that question. I said we're looking at these pictures here of Democratic politicians staging that sit-in. Is this going to be a focal point of this year's election campaign? I do think it will be a focal point. People are going to be focused on who can defend them and who is going to allow them to defend themselves as well. And I do think that... Uh, you have seen the gay community as well. Massive gun sales among the LGBTQ community have been going on the past week since Orlando. I think you're going to see people more focused on anti-terrorism, which will be more on the pro-Trump side, and more people focused on uh, their freedom to have weapons to defend themselves. Because unfortunately, the government couldn't stop those 49 people from being killed. Someone in there could have stopped it. And I do think that this will be Lord. a focal point. People, gun sales have skyrocketed every time okay. there's a mass shooting, just every time there's a terrorist attack. Lauren, People just, are going to be focused yes on no, the rights. Lauren, who makes gun control law in the U.S.? Is it the government or the NRA? It's the government. Jeffrey? Nonsense. It's the NRA. Of course it is, because they've got all the money to make sure that there is no legislation passed 
and the Republicans are such cowards, they won't go up against the NRA. They need the NRA money. The fact is, gun legislation works in Canada, Miss Southern. Uh, it does not work in America because there is none. You know those none. two are very, you know, very, very, very different situations with very different populations. Lawrence, no, actually Jeffrey they're Robinson, not. You are never going to agree on this. We really appreciate you never. both making your points. And we do apologize to viewers for some of the language used during the course I of our discussion. I don't apologize for my language uh, at all. But thank you all for joining us. Thank you. Thank you. Elsewhere. Agree or disagree, people should be allowed to say what they want. The idea that you should suffer some kind of punishment for speaking openly is astounding. Seriously, try mentioning some of these things in one of your classrooms one day. I've nearly given professors aneurysms, and they've cussed me out in class and said I'm not allowed to express certain views because of that. A girl in my women's studies class, which I <laughs> took because I'm a crazy person, uh, <laughs> she, she actually stood up in the middle of the class and said, your different opinions make me afraid to come to class. You shouldn't be allowed to have that. Now, I've been brought in front of the dean multiple times, and they kind of talk to me a bit, and they're like, oh, Lauren, we've got all these complains about you again, and they'll get something and just go through free speech. But I get complaints constantly because people are genuinely afraid of different opinions on campuses. It's insane. And this is the issue, is what people consider hate speech is so ambiguous and subjective that it can really be anything. If you go to Jersey Shore and give some women on the beach the ability to legislate hate speech laws, you're going to find yourself getting a prison sentence because you say someone's eyebrows are not on fleek. <laughs> and as a Canadian, I'm jealous of you and your First Amendment rights. Unfortunately, in Canada, we don't have the benefit of real constitutional protection of free, free speech rights. We do have hate speech laws, though, enforced proudly by the Human Rights Commission, our Orwellian Council that was initially meant to address small disputes over racial discrimination and gender discrimination in the workplace, but has now been transformed into the big brother waiting for us to say <coughs> something wrong. You give them a little control and they will take a lot. Anyway, boys and girls, I hope you guys enjoyed today's video. Once again, watching our uh, Lord and Saviour, Lauren, is definitely some good shit to watch. A am I right? So anyway, guys, if you did enjoy today's video, make sure to smash that motherfucking like button. And if you want to be notified when new videos are uploaded, hit that bell button. Anyway, guys, thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you in the next video.